It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, February 8th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that would love to have a season sweep of the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, and Blue Sky as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, uh, how are things in Michigan? Things are nice. Um, I This is crazy. I just tweeted about this. I ran into the high school coach of New York Jets head coach, Robert Sala, in a wing place. I went in to buy wings. Nice. A little place nice. in, in a gas station. And here's the guy and he's a teacher. And I'm like, cause he's wearing a jet shirt. So of course I can't resist. So yeah, interesting day. Yeah. Well, uh, as we know, Russ is in Michigan for the five nations tournament, checking in on some draft eligible prospects. We'll get into that talk about the goalies later in the show. In the meantime, no practice for the Flyers yesterday, uh, but tonight, of course, the Flyers are facing the Winnipeg Jets, and a couple of significant things in Jets land uh, of the hockey variety, not the football variety, (laughs) uh, that has uh, occurred recently. So over the All-Star break, they traded for Sean Monaghan uh, with Montreal. They uh, sent a first-round draft pick for 2024, a big deal, plus a conditional third in 2027. And do you think Monaghan was worth a first-rounder? <sighs> uh, because of his cheap salary, I guess, because he was only like a couple million bucks, two, two and a half, something like that. Um He's really good on faceoffs. He is not the best scorer. I mean, Montreal could play him in a million different situations. He's not the Sean Monahan I thought he'd be when he was drafted. Like, he's not a top line or even a second line guy anymore, really. But he's a useful guy who, at the center position in this offseason, was definitely the number two and really the last of the what you would call like guys who could play second line if they had to. So, in the end, I think they had to do it. The Jets certainly have a fair amount of prospects. And they also um, – the, the attendance hasn't been great there this year. So they need to sort of stir it up there too. So I think that that helped. Yeah, uh, Monahan played second-line center in his first game with Winnipeg. Uh, the other thing that happened in that game versus the Pittsburgh Penguins, who the Penguins won that game 3 to nothing by the way, but it was a lot due to the fact that Brendan Dillon, a defenseman for the Jets, hit uh, Noel Achari uh, in the head. Not great. Uh, Was given a match penalty and uh, was having a Wednesday phone hearing. So as of recording, we don't know the results of that hearing. So that uh, long power play helped the Penguins. It did. They got two goals during that power play. They're the worst team in the league to do that against. Absolutely the worst with the weapons they have. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what the suspension will be because you have to think that there will be given that, you know, he previously broke Teddy Bluger's jaw. He injured Kirill Kaprizov. Like, there's a history here. I know we we always say that. We always think that um, I think he's going to get well, let's see. Did they say it's a phone hearing or in person? Phone hearing, yeah. So up to five. Yeah, so it's only going to be like four or five games. That's a, it's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah. Well, the upshot, uh, you know, as far as our conversation is concerned, that he won't be in the game against the Flyers. 
you never know. It depends when he has the hearing. Well, that's true. It's that's true in terms of when the when the results of the hearing. But I right. do think he's suspended until the, the result. Did they do it right away? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think so. Okay. Um, as far as what I read, but you know, I, I don't think he'll be a factor uh, versus the Flyers here. Um, they're on a four-game losing streak, though. They lost to the Leafs right before the break. Yeah. Um, in a home and home, uh, which was not good for the Jets, let no. me tell you, um, especially against the Leafs. Uh, that is a tough home and home to lose yeah. both ends of there. Um, and, you know, you, you look at the standings and you, you look at the Flyers five game losing streak, uh, mm -hmm. the winning streak they had before that, you know, the Jets were a part of that. Mm -hmm. As we know, uh, the Flyers shut them out two to nothing on January 13th. Um, now, you know, at that time they were top in the NHL in the division, uh, when we saw them now they're third in the division, though they have some games in hand on the abs and the stars. So, you know, you balance that out a little bit here, but I, I think the jets in some ways are in a similar boat as the flyers were in terms of just having a little bit of a rough patch leading up to the break. Yeah. I mean, they're going to not be happy about this game. I would be surprised if Hellebuck's not in based on the fact that they have been losing. So they're going to probably face Hellebuck. Uh, they're going to be physical because they could be big and physical anyhow. You know, Monaghan is an adjustment, so you're not going to see instant results, I don't think, out of him. But we'll see. We'll see what he does in that game. But, you know, guys like Ehler, Shifley, Connor. Connor wasn't a, didn't play against the Flyers. Correct. So, then, so he was know, injured big, then and now he's back. That's a big deal. Like you put them on the power play. Now you got to deal with Kyle Connor's shot. So they got a few more things to dodge. It's going to be very similar to the Florida game. And we'll see if they can hold them back. Like that's a hard thing to hold Winnipeg back, uh, especially if they're motivated, which I think their coach Rick Bonus is going to have motivated. Yeah, they're going to have to, the Flyers are going to have to have a much better start against the yes. Jets than they did against Florida because I do think it's going to be even harder to make a comeback against the Jets um, this time. I think, you know, the Flyers were lucky to get that shutout that they did yeah. uh, the other time. I mean, they played very well in that game. Don't get me wrong. The no, Flyers they did. did. But I think that the Jets have a different kind of motivation right now. And that's that's the, the factor here. Uh, because Jets drive, they need to get points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, you look at the streak since uh, we saw the Jets last. Their goal differential then was 43. Now it's 36. Their goals per game was 3.43. Now it's 3.06. So, it like, the power play was 22nd in the NHL. Now it's 24th in the NHL. Like, things have been slowly creeping down yeah. uh, from a, a stat perspective for the Jets here as a team and so you know they they are in this hungry mode because they want to get back to where they were yeah the coach and... is going to try and shock them into life and show them video and say listen the Flyers aren't you know they're going to play really hard they're going to you're going to have to fight for every inch and I think Winnipeg's going to play it like a playoff game yeah they I mean they have to at this point they don't have a, a choice and um, I think, you know, with those games in hand, they're going to have to get the points with every single one of them as those right. games played, you know, slowly even out with yeah. the other teams in, in their division. And and again, you know, I think that it's going to be tough for teams that aren't in that top three to get those wild card spots. Like it's just a bloodbath in both conferences. It is a bloodbath. Um, it's just welcome to the NHL where. A lot right. of teams are still in it. Like that's, you know, that's just a fact. So um, it'll be interesting from the Flyers' perspective too, because we're hearing now that Jamie Drysdale is not on the top power play, and so that was the whole point. Yeah, like I don't know, I don't know why. I couldn't answer it when someone was asking me. So. Yeah, I mean they're they're definitely trying to change things up. They didn't score on the power play last game. Um, they only had one, so but they still didn't score. <laughs> yeah, so I think you know if you get three power plays and don't score, I think that's alarming at this point. Um, and you're going to have to in order to win some. Yeah, of these and games. that's my point. They they have to. So 
Okay. I mean, I guess they're going to keep going with what Zamula on the top because the shot gets through. All right. Yeah. Fine. Well, hopefully we get some power play opportunities for the Flyers right. in this game. I think that's uh, very important. Um, it is. That's a big you know, thing. Flyers can can draw penalties uh, against this team because I do think that's where the opportunities are. And they still are. Um, you know, that's what we talked about last time we played the Jets and their their penalty kill is worse than it was before. Um, you know, with the Flyers having the number two penalty kill in the league and the Jets having the 27th power uh, penalty kill in the league. I mean, that's where your opportunities are going to be. So the that's Flyers definitely the opportunity. That's, that's a big one. And I think the magic of the Flyers like scoring first thing is pretty much over. But on the flip side, the other part where they weren't going to ever win if they fell behind is also over. Yep. Absolutely. So the opportunities are there. They just have to take advantage of them. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the kids who are draft eligible have opportunities to show their stuff at the Four Nations tournament in Michigan, where Russ is right now. We're going to talk about the goalies on today's show. Very excited about that. We're going to do that coming up next. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day. Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Listeners of Locked On Flyers will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked On. Just go to Indeed.com slash Locked On right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Do you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. On tomorrow's show, of course, we will recap this game against the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, we will be looking ahead to the weekend and next week's action as well. Uh, Russ, th the goalies in this upcoming draft, I think there's been less talk overall about mm -hmm. the goalies uh, in, in this upcoming draft. And so you're getting a firsthand view of some of them that are available. And, you know, we talked a little bit yesterday about Team Finland and uh, their goalie might be turning some heads. Yeah, he's a he's a big guy. He's six four. Um, I like his personality. <laughs> I'd like it if his English were a little better because it was hard to interview him. Um, but he um, but he's a genuine kid. He definitely tries hard. He in the game that he lost, he was really good for two periods and probably for two and a half. And then the team in front of him kind of let him down. Penalty kill let him down. They all of a sudden they score a six on five. The game's tied. All of a sudden you lose in overtime. It's, it's, it's a tough thing for a kid like that, but he's very competitive. Uh, I like the way he makes kick saves. He makes them right to the uh, defenseman. He doesn't leave too many rebounds. He covers up quickly. Uh, I felt like his he's pretty quick up and down and pretty sure glove hand. But, you know, you could always shoot high on guys. But at 6'4", it's a little right. hard with him. But the one thing right. I was going to say also, he's got a large torso, like a long torso. So even when he is down – um, there's still quite a bit of height to shoot over. Like he's, he can be intimidating that way. So you, you know, guys will crash the net on them. They're going to, that's the way they're going to try and score on them. 
So Kim Sarnan is currently ranked first in the European goalies in uh, from Central Scouting. Do you think that's earned? I mean, it's hard for me to say because I haven't seen enough of his play away from this. Uh, you know, just the fact that he got to even be on the bench for you know in for HBK and Liga is a big deal. You know, mm-hmm. I certainly look at the numbers and say, yeah, it seems so, but. Um, I'm going to be learning about him more and more as the season goes on, like everybody else. So I'm, you know, I'm not a goalie expert, so I'm just sort of scratching the surface now with with guys like him. You know, he is in the HPK organization, like you mentioned. Um, he's mostly been playing on their U20 squad. Um, he started right. in the U18 uh, level, but has been sort of moved up a little bit, even though he doesn't turn 18 until July. So right. uh that is a good sign, I think. And, you know, he's got a 918 save percentage in 22 games. I think that's pretty solid uh, in that league. Yeah, it's his first time in the U.S. He thinks the U.S. is cool. Um, so it's one of those things where, you know, he's not letting, you know, the newness of all this affect his hockey play. Uh, I think he took it in stride the way that um, he handled this first loss in the tournament. And I appreciate the fact that he seems like a guy that could just turn the page, like a lot of good goalies. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jack Parsons is mm-hmm. a goaltender for Team USA, also 6'4", he, but he's already 18 years old. Um, he was ranked sixth in the North American goalies for Central Scouting uh, in their early rankings and is a Providence College commit for next year. Um, how does he look so far? He looks good. This was... Right now, this is the best I've seen him play. I've seen him play a little bit before. Um, he's another guy who's got good size. Uh, the glove hand's good. He challenges guys, so he did, like, stop a, a breakaway pretty easily. And he reads and reacts well. So he's very calm back there. Now, again, the team in front of him is a really good team. But still... You could be a shaky goaltender behind a really good team, too. And he's not. He's very decisive. His clears are good. Uh, I feel like he's got good vision. So I think he's just a little bit behind, uh, you know, some of those other goalies that we've talked about. But I feel like, you know, he feels like a rounder, maybe late third, something like Mm -hmm. that, where, you know, Saarinen maybe gets in the second round, maybe. So depending on the rest of how the rest of his year goes. But right now this was a good showing. I mean, again, um, the critics are going to tell you, well, this was against Switzerland, Russ. And I'm like, okay, sure. But if he didn't do well, then, you know, you'll rip him even more. So, you know, he did what he had to do. Yeah. I think, you know, it's really tough uh, when there's a lot of pressure on you, even against a team that you're ostensibly supposed to beat, you still have to perform at an elite level in order to keep your spot on that team. And right. um, I think, you know, with this year being sort of his last year in the development program before he heads off to college, like he's got to soak everything up and really yeah. perform at his best to increase his draft pick chances and, and get to a good organization that there's room for him in. Like th- all those moving pieces and parts are, are really difficult to navigate. It is. I mean, it's a good thing, though, that that he is going to Providence. So there'll be teams out there that that night like Nate Lehman, the coach, very well known, very good, always good program there. So that helps, too. So that, that'll help get him drafted, too. Yeah. Uh, Axel Neiman from Team Sweden is six five, even taller than the other two. Uh, we'll talk about that trend a little bit later in the show. But um you know, he is uh, playing in the Swedish U-20 league right now and um, is part of the tandem for this Sweden team. The other goalie on the, on that team is a 2025 draft eligible kid. So we won't focus on him as much. Although his name is Love, which is really His cute. name is Love, man. I mean, I'm, I'm in, <laughs> I piqued my interest. I will say that. Yeah. But Neiman is ranked 12th of the European goalies uh, with central scouting. So you know, not as high as our Finnish friend we just talked about. No, and 12 doesn't but, guarantee you get drafted either. Um, yeah, but he's a point. bigger overall in height and weight. Yeah. So I would say of the three, he's not as good as the other two. 
Um, there is runway with him, though, because he is younger. Uh, you don't really notice that he's – I wouldn't even want to call him underweight. He's a little underweight. You don't really notice that. I, I feel like – I felt like his game was not um, up to snuff at the beginning of the game. I felt like he started slow. And then I felt like maybe like towards the end of the first – into the second, he held his team in it, like a lot of goalies have to. And then that helped Sweden sort of make the comeback. And then I think it was just luck of the die that the puck wasn't in his end in overtime because I don't remember him making a big stop. Um, so right. I think that's, you know, that's a toss up sometimes. But he definitely kept his team in it. Uh, he's athletic. I do think he leaves a little bit of rebounds. Guys were definitely going to the net and then shooting far side. So like if they were going down the left side, they would do that one hand move and try and get it around them or vice versa. And at least one or two of those went in. So that was the book on them. So mm -hmm. he's got to, he's got to clean that up. He's got to clean up his rebounds. Uh, there's definitely something there, uh, but this tournament could go a long way in getting them drafted. Like they won a game that they could somehow, you know, win the tournament, come in second. He's the best goalie or one of the best goalies. Uh, like I said, all the all the best goalie guys are here. You know, I've seen them already. So that's a a big deal for him. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, I think you know there there's time for Axel to kind of change his fortunes a little bit, and maybe he no. will get drafted. And this tournament is a big part of it. Um, all of this, you know, leads to some interesting questions about NHL goaltending and the future of it related to tournaments like this in this upcoming draft. We are going to talk about that coming up next. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They've got killer deals on last minute tickets and with their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting excited for all the fun you'll have. My favorite part of the Game Time app is that it's great for getting notified about last minute tickets and flash deals. Plus, you can get that all important view from your seat. They've got tickets right up to the start of the event and even up to an hour after it starts. So it's the place to find your last minute seats. Also, those tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. So, Russ, all the guys we talked about, as we said, are 6'4 or taller. Um, so is this the thing for the time being? Are we able... Are we ever going to see like shorter goaltenders again? I mean, there's UC Soros and that's about it. Uh, but there's still, you know, Jonathan Bernier wasn't that long ago. And he, he was a shorter goalie. This trend's been going on in drafting for five years. Mm -hmm. So we're just now seeing it more and more in the NHL because these guys are starting to, to come up like Matt Sogard as an example, you know? So, Every team five years ago or even more recent all had a big goalie in their system. Every single one of them. I'd be shocked if you could find me a one that doesn't. And some had more than one because they saw the way things were going. Um, they could see that shooters go high now, as we talked about last segment. So when they go high, if you have a bigger guy, you get even less to shoot at, right? You get that little spot. Right. So you know, it's, it's all of that. It's, you know, we always used to joke, Hey, what if you got a sumo in that? And, you know, you see the, whatever commercial it is with the, uh, with the otter, right. The big giant otter trying to block the net, you block as much net as you possibly can. But the thing is with the bigger goalies, they also have to be very athletic and faster than right. the predators. So sometimes it takes a long time to develop these guys because there's more moving parts. The five holes a lot bigger, you know, it becomes more challenging, but 
it is the future of goaltending. There will always be outliers. There will always be some shorter guys. But to be honest, the shorter guys now are six foot. Right. Yeah, because, you know, you look at Alexei Kolosov is six foot, um, but Carson Bjarnason is six three. Right. So there, there's a big difference there in terms of the last couple of goaltenders that the yes. Flyers ha have drafted um, that seem to have like strong potential to them. Um, but I, I did sort of wonder if, if because of that height and, you know, the athleticism required, are we going to see new goaltending styles emerge for these taller guys? You might, because there is a little bit of ripping for the current. So I'm kind of wondering at some point, is someone going to change it all and turn it upside down? Uh, it could happen. And I don't know who the person is going to, is, you know, I don't know if it's going to be Benoit Lair with the Rangers. I don't know if it's going to be somebody on the outside. I know a guy from Woodley who talks to everybody, uh, all goaltenders. He probably has an idea maybe where that's going. So I don't know, but somebody's yeah. probably going to do that. Or it's some 12 year old we've never heard of yet. <laughs> could be. Yeah. Like, like you get a Dominic Hoshik type that all of a sudden this starts to work and then everybody can mimic it. But yeah. I don't see it in the, in the near future, but I do see it as a possibility. Yeah. So as far as the goalies that you've seen and you're following for this upcoming draft and the next year's draft, like what does it mean in terms of national team strength? Um, and, you know, potential, are we going to see any sea changes as far as who's winning these international tournaments strictly on the backs of, of goaltending? No, I mean, you know, honestly, world juniors, there was some good goaltending, but I think we'd all agree there was nothing right. that, that really made us take notice. Uh, you know, maybe in the link of that changes towards the end of the season, but I don't think there's anything like that now going on. Uh, I think. I think the reason the teams are really digging in here is because, A, if you can find a goal, then you don't have to pay them um, five, six million bucks for at least, you know, four, five, six years, whatever, um, mm -hmm. depending on how you structure the contract and if they go to college and all that. I'm not getting into that. But that's something where teams are now, you know, they're, they're digging deep. And honestly, and I think we learned this the last couple of drafts, where they're ranked with central scouting or someone like me or any other service teams don't ignore it, but they almost ignore it. All right. Because Bjarnason wasn't anywhere um, ranked. I don't think he was ranked first or second. Maybe he was like fourth or fifth, something like that with, with central yeah. scouting last year. And they took him in the second round anyhow. Right. Um, yeah. And he was one of the first guys off the board, Jacob Fowler, who I was really fond of went later. Right. I think he went after. So, you know, it's it, it, it depends on the goalie expert with the organization and their goalie coach and what they look for. Yeah, I, I think that's that's fair. And um, I it just feels like there's some changes afoot, especially related to the goaltending, just because I feel like there hasn't really been you know, a true superstar goaltender in the last couple of drafts. And it doesn't feel like there's one this year. Um, so it's really just affecting the overall goaltending pipeline. Um, and not to mention the ban on Russian and Belarusian well, that's goaltenders. A other... and, yeah, that's going to have a huge impact on the landscape in NHL goaltending. Because like, you, you know, you look at Samsonov, you look at Shesterkin, like we're, we're not going to see guys like that for the next several years, just because the development pipeline got cut off. Right. And then certain leagues can only have like, you know, one import, those kinds of mm -hmm. things. So all those things matter. Like they all come into play and that's, that's a big deal. But I also will say that um, when you're talking about how this works, as far as, I don't think it's really going to matter about nationality as much. I mean, look, Russian goalies are finding their way in the NHL anyhow, right? Three of the best are Russian. You could say three of the top 10 are definitely Russian. They could be three of the top five with Vasilevsky, Shesterk, and, and, and Sorokin, right? And there's more coming. So I think everybody goes through these cycles. The U.S. is going through a very good cycle. Now Canada is having trouble. Um, so that's where you just say, okay. You got to just really identify these guys early, follow them for a long period of time, and then see. Then you got to sort yeah. of wait and wait and see. And 
these goalies, I, you know, I spoke to a goalie parent maybe like three, four months ago at a tournament and what they go through just to kind of get their kid even just ready for any of these tournaments is way more than you would ever imagine just with private lessons, with equipment, with dedication to it, with all of that. So that's why I think when you see some of these goalies, they are, they can be mature. I think the reason they don't get too bummed out about not getting picked for a tournament or not making a team and just playing in, in the minors for a little while is because it's always hard to find playing time. And so I think right. they all know that there's a limited amount of jobs and you have to sort of just wait. You could be really good and you have to wait. As an example, um, Yaroslav Askarov was one of those goalies deemed as a potential superstar, uh, you know, when he was drafted. And it took a little while. Well, why did it take? Well, if they went from Pekka Rene to Saros and eventually they're going to go to him. So, yes, he's taken a little while, but that doesn't hasn't taken away from his talent. Right. We all know how well he's doing right now. So Spencer Knight has had, you know, his issues. But I think we all know how good Spencer Knight can be. So, yeah, I yeah. think it's part of the position where there's a there's a time factor that these guys have to wait. It's very rare. You know, Carter Hart came up really young. Most teams are not going to do that now. Yeah, I think so. Because you just, the development path changes so much yeah. over those three or four years between being drafted and, and where they are with it's time to go pro. And I'm not saying NHL pro, I'm just saying pro right. in general. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, the next couple of years of goalie drafting is going to be very interesting to follow for sure. Every team um, should draft at least one goalie every draft. That's what I'm, that's what yeah. I always say. Absolutely. But we'll be tracking more of the goaltenders uh, eligible for this year's draft as the next uh, several months progress. Uh, excited to do that in the meantime. And there are some glad. other big names. There are. Yeah. And uh, excited to add the names we've talked about today to my spreadsheet, which is uh, uh, linked in our link tree. So you can get to it from there. Uh, that will do it for today's show. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. If you've got mailbag questions about these goalies or anything else, you can send them via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail or comment over on our YouTube channel. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Have a great day, everyone.